Bingo, we're back. We're here on Think Tech Tech Talks on a given Tuesday, and we have an exciting show with Brandon, uh, Bra Bra Braden Morena of Robo on the mainland uh, to talk about 3D printing and his startup, 3D printing from your cell phone, no less. Uh, welcome to the show, Braden. It's nice to have you on our Think Tech. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. I'm excited to show you guys some of the stuff we're doing. Just, uh, just for reference so that you know, I can wrap my mind around it, where are you? I am in San Diego, California. Okay. Yeah. Somehow that makes it more understandable, relatable. We know you're far away. We now we know where you are. That helps. Yeah, <laughs> but you could be in, in in Portugal just as easily, actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, that's the beauty of technology, right? You bet. So tell us about your company. I'm very excited. 3D printing, and you have a startup, and um, you're doing Kickstart, and it's sitting. The, the, the device, or at least one of your devices, is sitting right next to you. I can hardly wait to know how it's going. Yeah, yeah, it's been, we started the company back in 2000, actually middle of 2012, we started building our first machine, and my business partner was making a prosthetic uh, leg using a 3D printer. It was an industrial machine, very expensive, and that's where he got the idea to kind of start building his own machine. And uh, so we started working together on making a product for mass consumers around the world, because we knew entrepreneurship and building products was becoming a big trend and so you know as old saying goes like the people that were successful in the gold rush weren't the people you know seeking gold they were the people selling the tools to seek gold so we figured we could sell the tool that could help entrepreneurs build businesses so yeah so it, but that you know that does suggest that you you jumped into an area which is highly competitive yeah. where the technology is changing as you watch yeah. and you jumped in I mean what what made you feel a that you were qualified to jump into such a fast-moving area, and B, that you could compete with, you know, the guys who are already there. Um, what's your secret sauce, man? Yeah, we came in, so actually when we first saw the space, there wasn't many people that were really trying to build a brand in the space, which was interesting to me. There was a lot of products out there at the time, probably 10 to 15 other companies, but they were just companies. There weren't big brands. There was one big brand that was uh, dominating the space. There was a lot of opportunity as it was growing, you know, exponentially. So. We came in and we created this really our first model was this really nice, sleek looking machine and uh, I think we set the tone to kind of build this this brand around 3D printing and we you know sold it at a phenomenal price and it was fully put together. It didn't look like an erector set. It was this really nice, ready to go out of the box machine. I think people were excited about having that kind of plug and play esque experience of 3D printing. Well, you know it reminds me of Apple, how whatever Apple does, Apple does a beautiful job in the in the consumer design, the user design, if you will. And, and I just came fresh from the Museum of uh, Modern Art, MoMA, uh, yeah. on 53rd Street in New York just a couple of days ago. And the same thing there, you know, design is everything. You love yeah. to have tech, you want to have great tech, but um, for it to sell, for it to be appealing, to send the right message, it's got to have good design. I'm looking at that machine right next to you, and I would say just offhand that it has very nice consumer design on it. Yeah, and it's got, it's got not only a nice consumer design, but very practical elements. You know, when you look at 3D printing and all the pain points that we have in consumer machines, we've been, really been able to solve them with this product. So even small things like it becomes messy inside the machines and the ability we created this entire structure out here to just be like really easy to clean off. I mean, just the smallest things we've thought about in this machine, the way we built it, the way we designed the internal components for customer support, for manufacturing, I mean, everything about it is like a consumer designed, easy to use, you know, fun experience end to end. So, where are you building it? Who's who's actually manufacturing that machine? So we're actually um, we're talking to a big manufacturer right now. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't want to say anything about their name yet, but they are a massive, massive manufacturer. We're trying to partner with them. Um, you know, they do a lot of manufacturing in Mexico, over in China. Uh, and in the U.S. as well, so we'll probably be doing a diversified manufacturing. Oh, exciting! Oh, now we have pictures. There's yeah. one. There's one model on the left with a, a red robo sign, and one model, a smaller model, I guess, on the right with a yeah. blue uh, robo sign. Tell us the difference. Uh, oh, on the machines, the both machines. Yeah. So this right here is the Robo C2. This is the lower end model. This one uh, retails at 5.99 right now on our Kickstarter campaign. Mm -hmm. You buy it. It's exclusive pricing, but. This is kind of the foundation product. So this is we started to build a product that we could then scale up into larger machines and add more features. So this is kind of your base, ready to go, plug and play, easy to use consumer machine. And then as you go to the next step up, which is called our R2, uh, the Robo R2, that machine has 
you know, the ability to add an additional head so you can do multiple materials at once. It has like an onboard camera so you can monitor your print. Um, it has a little bit bigger of a touch screen. So it's got a couple of additional features that I think people are going to be excited about and a bigger build space. So this one is a five by five by six envelope that you can print in. The other one will have an eight by eight by 10 envelope. So you can print a lot bigger items. Do you have any patents on anything there? I mean, it sounds like you got, you including all the technology one could find about this kind of device. Have you patented anything in it? We have patents are in our business and in the industry right now, but not on the machines yet. Uh, we are like lucky to be in this amazing open source community right now. So yeah. around printing, people are sharing files they've designed. I mean, amazing designers spent tons of time and they're sharing them with the world for free. And so, and like with this machine, you can use any of the materials that are on the marketplace. So other products require you buy their materials, the whole razor blade business model. Um, just like a printer, 2D printer, you have to buy the ink from the manufacturer. We give you the ability to use any material. So there's fun stuff out there. There's rubber materials. There's wood infused materials. There's carbon fiber infused materials, metal infused. And so you can, it's all supported by these machines, which is cool. Well, you know, I mean, really it's a statement, isn't it? That modern technology companies like yours um, don't necessarily have to be, um, you know, fascinated with patent protection. Yeah, I know. Because you're going to move fast enough that maybe by the time anybody catches on to what you're doing, you'll be ahead of the game anyway with your next version. Am I right? Yeah, if you're not always competing with yourself, you're a dying business. So that's constantly what we're doing with our new machines. And we're already working on a machine to outcompete these ones in our next generation. So, <laughs> um, you know, I think Elon Musk is kind of starting that trend of, you know, getting away from the patent protection and more open source and inviting people to come in and enhance technology as a whole. And I think there's a lot to be said about doing that, especially with this tech. Yes, uh, I agree. Yeah. yeah. It's it maybe the new the new way. The new way is better. So yeah, how did you how did you get so expert on putting something like that together and designing it with, you know, all of these features? I mean you had to do a lot of training, a lot of reading, a lot of examination. How'd you do with that? Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting, and I don't mention this too much unless I'm talking to like students in entrepreneurship classes, but none of us are really true mechanical engineers that started the business, and this is a very mechanically engineered product. Um, I, you know, a lot of our, I mean, we were always makers at heart, so we had that side of it. We always like to build things, um, you know, create things. We were always doing stuff like that, but with this technology, we really just became so intrigued by it and obsessed with it that we went on the forums, we went on the YouTube, we went on, I mean, everywhere we can to find out about how to build these machines, we just started building our own from scratch. It was a fun experience for us, and we were frustrated as heck about every you know, little piece of it, whether it worked or why it didn't work, or how do we make it better, and it just led us to kind of this, all I can call it is an obsession with creating. Oh, really I'm sure. It's a great story. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, I totally appreciate that. You know, you yeah, can. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, the amount of con I built a business before this that was uh, fixing cell phones, and we learned it all from YouTube. So the University of Google and the University of YouTube. <laughs> there you that's, go. <laughs> that's us to create some amazing things. So. Okay, well, let's talk about the software now. I mean, one of the things that's really catchy about this is you can um, you can find templates. You can design your own um, products uh, to be to be modeled, um, yeah. and you can do all of that from a cell phone. Yeah. Um, that's pretty sophisticated software, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's pretty sophisticated. No one's, you know, one of the benefits of this new line of machines is no one's created this completely mobile experience where you can just print from our mobile devices. I mean, this is becoming our next computer, right? So <laughs> being able to use this to download files you find online using an iPad, an iPhone, we're going to have Android soon, and then just send them to your machine via wireless and be able to have it print and notify you when it's done. I mean, that's pretty incredible. Yes. So uh, we're doing a lot of cool stuff in there. I mean, a lot of enhancements on the app side. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's a cool thing to have that ability now with people's, you know, their cell phones. What about the old guys like me who don't necessarily, you know, know what to do with an iPad? Yeah. Uh, or whose uh, eyesight's not good enough to work on a on a mobile a small mobile device. Yeah. Uh, and I have you know I have my Apple even my iMac. Can I use can I use a bigger machine to design for this printer? Yeah, you can use any, I mean you can use computers too, any computer, and just send it directly to the machine. So there's kind of the element of there's a couple ways to get files. You can design it, so you can use a any desktop computer. Most people do when they design just because of the capabilities and you know the big screens and things like that. So you design an amazing file in any software that's out there, and all you do is take that file, you export it, 
as what's called an STL, and that's where you just send directly to the machine and they'll print it for you. Super simple process. So you can do that side of it. The side we're kind of appealing to with mobile and being able to print from your smartphone is all these marketplaces. So we're, we want people to go in and go like, hey, I need this piece, or I just broke a component. Let me go in and find it, download it, and just send it directly to the machine and print a re replica piece of that product. So that's the side I think that there's not going to be probably so much design done on these. But the ability to find files quickly and print them or scan them from your smartphone and print them is, is in really happening right now. Well, suppose uh, I, I didn't catch exactly how you connect from yeah. you know, the device to the printer. Is it Bluetooth or is it, um, could it's I Wi-Fi print by, by wireless or what do I need? Yeah. So it actually emits its own Wi-Fi signal. So, and all you're doing is you connect to the Wi-Fi. And what it does is once you open up the app, it will basically connect to the printer that you have on board. So you can see if you look up here, it says it's connected right here. If I click on the printer, I can go into the controls and I can actually control the printer from here. So I can make it, if you can see it move back there, every time I send it a command, it will move. And then I can actually print directly from this. So I can go into a library. So we have these cloud libraries that connect either to your Google Drive or your Dropbox account. And you can just find a file you want. You can just click it. You can press this little button that says send to printer, send it to the printer, and then it will start heating up and it'll start printing back there. Now, do, do I have to be near the machine? I mean, I, I figure I have to be within wireless distance of the machine. Yeah, but do I have to be able to see the machine in order to perform those functions? Yeah, you have to be in wireless to actually start it. Um, and then you can go completely off the grid. So it, what it's doing is it transfers in and out of the machine, and the machine is going to start printing it. So in the R2 model, you'll be able to actually see it right here with this little camera. It'll show you the actual print printing so you can monitor it. Um, but as you can see, it's starting to print the actual piece right now. So really, I mean, we're trying to make it as simple as possible. We want you to literally just unbox this thing, find a file, Send it to the machine, it'll do all the work for you. All the settings will be there for you. It's just as simple, as easy as possible. So you sure. get people into 3D printing. That's really valuable because, you know, traditionally 3D printers, you know, have required a lot of attention and lots of settings and you had to be kind of a semi-expert in yeah. order to run them. But this sounds like it's, um, it's got a great interface so that you can do it without a hard, hardly trying. Yeah, it's fine. We have, we have obviously the mobile version. You can do anything from a computer. And then we have this touch, touch screen that's on it as well that tells you like how long left in the print. And you know it shows a little percentage scale. And you can that's what the settings on that. You can do whatever. So we try to make it like as fun as possible as well. And one of the things that we are going to be doing inside this, too, is creating this like gamified experience, which I think is going to be interesting. So as you print more, as you print like a variety of things across different industries, you'll get like these tags or these rewards for doing it. So <laughs> we'll be able to send people like new files if they print like a lot of specific files in a certain category. So we're trying to make it fun. I really want people to get into it because once you start using it, it's like it's hard to break the barrier to get someone into it. But once they start using it, ideas just start flowing. Sure. All these amazing things start happening. And we've seen that so much firsthand that we know, you know, we just want that to continue. Well, what are the boundaries? I mean, uh, you know, there, there's some very sophisticated machines out there that can use uh, incredibly hard materials um, and that are relatively faster than, you know, 3D printing was a few years ago. How, how far along that continuum are you? And um, if you are not as far as you want to be, are you planning to be there further in yeah. the next term here? Yeah, I would say, so I think the one thing that's tripping up this mass consumption of 3D printing is the time it takes to print something. So speed is a huge factor, right? We have, I mean, these machines are some of the, probably one of the top two fastest FDM machines, which is like this plastic layering and building in layers. So it prints one layer, it moves up, builds on top, and it just keeps building layers until you have this three-dimensional object. That's called FDM printing. And this one is one of the faster ones in the industry right now, but FDM technology eventually is going to die because it's just you're limited by physics, right? It can't go, it can only go so fast in deposit material. Um, so there is other technologies that are more expensive that will come down to a consumer price point and will be accessible to everyone. And once that speed, if I can take a an hour print and make it in a minute, 
I mean, that's a whole different game for everyone, right? Now right. there's now you're talking about I'm not competing with going to the store. I'm not competing with you know Amazon's hour delivery. I'm literally if I need a piece or I need a component instantly, I can print it in a matter of minutes. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about in the next part of the show. It's uh, Braden Marina of Robo on 3D printing using your cell phone and other device. Really exciting technology uh, in a Kickstarter fashion right now. We're going to take a short break. We're going to see how far that thing gets during yeah. our one-minute break. We'll be right back, and we'll talk about what this means for the community, yeah. for, the, for the country, for manufacturing. Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gardo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m. where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. Okay, we're back. We're having a wonderful time with Braden Moreno, uh, who's in San Diego, in a company called Robo, uh, which does 3D printers, new, brand new, high-tech 3D printers, and you can use them from your cell phone. They have great implication for this country. Anyway, uh, so let's let's talk about to how far you got in the one minute, Braden. Are we, are we finished yet? We are on, so we're still on the second layer now. So this has a cup, about 150 layers, so it's got a while to go, but... The good thing about 3D printing at this stage is it's very autonomous. So, just like those old rotisserie cookers, you can set it and forget it. So yeah, you can yeah. you can start it, go out to lunch, come back, and your piece is done, or go to sleep. I like printing when I'm sleeping. So. Do they ever jam? Do they ever fail? Um, occasionally, that is an issue. Like, I, I think across the industry for these consumer machines, but. We have this thing, we have this little filament sensor on it, so if there is a jam, it does tell you and it stops the print. Uh -huh. And it will warn, like basically tell you, hey, this has happened, there's like an error, and then you can go and change it or fix it and then restart it. So just like a normal 2D printer with the paper. I guess it's like, um, it's like cars in general. You used to have a lot of maintenance and issues about breaking down, but uh, as the technology gets better, you address these problems and um, you have fewer problems over no, time. So uh, and, and in the future, there'll be fewer problems. But let's, let's talk about the capability of a given machine like uh, either the Robo, uh, what is it, C2R, C2R4? C2R, yeah, yeah. uh, uh, C2 sounds like uh, a, a small robot, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I know yeah. everyone's messaging us <laughs> saying, why didn't you do a D2, or an R2 D2? And we, you know, we obviously didn't. <laughs> So what, what, you know, if I'm really ambitious and I want to, you know, push the envelope on this, what kind of things can I make with these yeah. devices that you've built? So we started doing prosthetic limbs, so there's a huge community. This isn't the most practical thing for most consumers, but from the medical side, these, we've printed probably over 50 different prosthetic limbs for kids all over the world. There's a group called Enable Foundation, which makes these 3D printed prosthetics. Costs about $20 worth of material when normal prosthetics are five to 50000 so... That's a huge use right now for 3D printing. And I've and seen those. I've seen those. And what material are they made with? Uh, PLA. So it's just a standard food grade plastic, um, very safe, simple to use, uh, most popular material that most people print with. So that's what these ones are done with. Still a very strong, uh, nice structure to it. And um, yeah, they're you know they're having a lot of success making these 3D printed prosthetic cans. If, if I wanted to make that in say flesh color, would I, would I be able to do it from the printer? Uh, yeah. Will Will the printer print in different colors? Yep, yep. We have we print, we sell over twelve different materials, but there's probably a hundred different colors and things like that out there. So you can print this in any different color, any style you want. We've made one for. Uh, there's been ones that our customers have made for kids that look like a Wolverine, and you can do all sorts of fun stuff and customize it and personalize it. So mm. it's a cool community, especially when you're building it for kids that have all these ideas of how they want to create their custom prosthetic hands. You know that may have been born with a birth defect or something. Yeah. 
So yeah, great. What cool. else you got? Uh, this one right here. This is actually one of my really good buddies. He actually 3D printed. This is a GoPro mount that you hold with your mouth when you're surfing. And he actually started an entire business off just this design. So he designed this piece, he 3D printed it, and he created a Kickstarter campaign, a crowdfunding campaign of this business idea to help surfers really get good shots of their surfing using this mouthpiece mount. Oh, cool. So this was like his first prototype that he built, and I had him drop it off because I want to talk about it, because you know now he's in 20 plus stores all across the country selling this mount that he started with you know, a, a Robo 3D printer. Think, think of the money he saved and not having to send it out for manufacturing. Yeah. A quick story, I, my first business was a watch business, and it took me a year and $10,000 to get my first prototype, and this cost, this probably took a week, and maybe $20 worth of material to perfect <laughs> this piece. So, I mean, the amount of innovation speed that can happen with 3D printing is incredible. Yeah. So excited about that. And then this is just a fun piece. This is something, you know, when you talk about the millions of files that are online that you can just go and download and print, I just searched showerhead and someone literally had designed a T-Rex showerhead. So you can actually install this. <laughs> That's like and great fun. <laughs> internal threads in here, you can literally just, I have it on my shower. You can just go like this and twist it on and this thing will be a showerhead. I want it, Braden. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get one. But you know, you're, let your mind, as you said, let your mind fly. Once you know that you have the capability of doing this kind of thing, you have all kinds of ideas come to mind. Yeah, you get upset. I mean, iPhone, smartphone cases. I mean, you just get obsessed with, oh, what can I 3D print now? I just got a Bluetooth speaker. I can make like a little Bluetooth shell for it. I, you know, they have little iPhone amplifier docks that you can put in that amplify the sound of your speakers. I mean, there's just incredible stuff out there um, that people are making with, you know, this 3D modeling tools and just sharing them for free. So yeah. you just start, you start going in there and browsing and you're really excited about all the stuff. You yeah. So I can go on the net right now and I can get these templates that people are sharing, yep. and then I get a printer like yours, and um, I can I can create anything like that, and yeah. I can design my own, I guess. Yeah, you can design your own. I mean, there's free software out there. One of them is called Tinkercad. Uh, it's made by Autodesk, and you can go on there. You can download it for free right now. Anyone that's listening and watching, and uh, you can just start designing stuff. They have great tutorials, and once you design something, you literally can just send it to your printer and print it. So I would Kids. guess I would guess that this is this is happening. In other words. Um, what's on what's online right now? The ideas that are available to me, open source right now, are probably increasing dramatically. And if oh. I look in a month or six months, I'm going to find a lot more. Am I right? Thousands a day. I mean, thousands of files are being uploaded a day. Um, marketplaces. There's some that are trying to charge money for the files. There's some that are keeping it free and open source, which is amazing. So most of it is still free. I mean, you can go on and download just about anything. And, I mean, it's going to be really cool, this customized, personalized world where, you know, I need an iPhone case and I can go in there and type my name and this really cool iPhone case comes out and I can print it instantly, put it on my phone and I'm ready to go. And it's happening with so many different, I mean, you can buy a GoPro, there's hundreds of GoPro mounts you can just print yeah. and, you know, add to your GoPro and then start using them. So yeah. Including soft stuff. things, including, right? Including, you said rubber was one of the materials you can have, and I suppose there's new materials all the time. Material oh, yeah. science is, is expanding at a rapid rate. So it doesn't have to be something hard. You know, you think of these printers, you think of something hard, but it doesn't have to be hard, right? Yeah, most people think it's just like this hard plastic material, but, I mean, we've got some cool rubber materials. I mean, there's certain people that design things that, you know, create flexible elements to it that even though you're using a hard material, it still feels flexible. So, but the rubber materials, I mean, People are loving it. It's yeah. called Ninja Flex. It's really, really cool, well-designed, strong rubber material and, and gives you like really nice flexibility. So that opens up a whole new genre of things you can print. Sure. For example, for example, shoes. Yep. I got, you know, I got my own, my own expectations about shoes. Uh, I know what my size is, or at least I can design and, you know, trial and error, find exactly the right size for my shoes. I can keep that design. And whenever I want a pair of shoes, I can create a pair of shoes, whatever color, whatever texture, um, whatever size, design, right? Am I right? Yeah, there's a cool company in San Diego uh, that we're friends with called Feeds, F-E-E-T-Z. And they created this system you actually step into. It scans your foot. It's, it basically balances, it corrects your foot. So if you need a lift, things like that. And then it custom makes you a shoe. It sends it to the machine. And it'll make a custom shoe that literally fits your foot like to perfection. 
I mean, yes, I tried yes. this thing on and I was like, this is like a glove on my foot. <laughs> and it's just, it's, there's no other way to make a perfectly customized shoe than with 3D printing. So uh, they're doing some amazing stuff, you know, in software development and things like that. And, I mean, there's just so much happening in the space. It's, it's exciting every single oh, day. Oh, so. sure. I mean, when you think about shoes, then the next thing you think about is clothing. Yeah, now, I know that's not big enough perhaps for, you know, a, a certain kinds of garments. But if you had the right material and you had all the design, you could create your own clothing. You could, yeah. well, you could build a factory, couldn't you? Yeah. This, yeah. That's what I wanted to ask you about. How is this, you know, in your mind's eye, in, in, in your wildest expectations, how is this going to affect what we have seen over the past few years as the failure of American manufacturing? Could yeah. this make it come back? I 100% I think so. Um, just looking at an example from the prototyping side of things, uh, we, we've been talking with Lockheed Martin, and Lockheed Martin puts consumer machines on the desks of a lot of their uh, engineers, and they've gone from doing 20 prototypes a quarter to doing 220 prototypes a quarter, um, just by having this on-the-desk solution because it's so much more effective and quick, and so the speed of innovation is happening so much faster. And what's going to end up happening is perfecting of the products before they go into manufacturing is going to happen, and manufacturing has become more efficient, and if it becomes more efficient, it becomes cheaper, and you know, hopefully that then brings it back to the U.S. Um, if we can. So I, I 100% agree. Um, Invisalign, great example. They have a factory of the future, is what they call it, where they did you know 17 to 20 million unique Invisalign retainers, all using 3D printing. So it was an entire lights on, uh, lights off operation using 3D printers to make customized retainers. So it's a confluence of everything, you know a confluence of the hardware, the software, the material science, the design, the art. My, my goodness, so this must be very exciting for you. It's exciting for me just to hear you talk about it. And I think it's exciting for a whole generation of you know, American designers, American software designers too. Um, yeah. Really incredible. And I, I just wanna, before we leave, we're almost done here. Before we leave, I just wanna get um, you know, the address of your Kickstart campaign and what you're doing and how people can connect with you. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so we have two new machines we just launched on Kickstarter. That's how we started the business, so we're kind of going back to Kickstarter to say, hey, thank you. We want to give our backers and fans exclusive pricing, so they're $200, $300 off retail. If you go there now, um, you can go to our website, robo3d.com. You'll see links to the Kickstarter from there. Or if you just go to kickstarter.com and search robo3d, you'll see our campaign page come up. And, we have the Robo C2, and then we have a bigger version called the Robo R2, and you'll see all the features and phenomenal smart 3D printing machines. So, well, I'm so glad we connected, Braden. That was yeah, a great too. discussion, very important, uh, and I and I I'd like to reconnect with you at a later time to see how you know how it's worked for you. But I yeah. I, I think we're we're with you on this. We want you to succeed. Okay, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm excited too. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Braden Marina of Robo, Robo Company, uh, doing 3D printing from your cell phone with new hardware, new software, new prospects for American manufacturing. Thank you so much, Braden. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. Appreciate it. Take Aloha. care.